I, I have a problem. I have many problems, but I have a problem. And my problem is, as, as a writer of narrative nonfiction, my problem is um, knowing what to put into a book and what to take out. To me, the, the, the narrative that runs through a book is really a sort of a spine upon which you hang as many juicy facts and details as you can. Sort of like a, it's like a Christmas tree and I get to hang all these shiny ornaments on it. The danger always being that you hang so many ornaments on this tree that it falls over. And, and of course, it would fall over in front of a smiling New York Times reviewer. <laughs> but, but to help me with this, I have, I have a secret weapon. My secret weapon is my wife. She's here tonight. Um, she is. She, she, is, uh, she is, in fact, a, a physician. She's a neonatologist in intensive care for, for, for uh, newborn babies. Um, she is also, though, a natural editor, and, and I've come to rely on her absolutely for helping me through this, this particular problem and other problems as well. But, but, but um, what she does, um, the, thing, the thing that, again, is, is, is so hard is, is knowing how, how much to take out of, out of the book. And therefore, you need somebody like her who's really a terrific reader. Now, it has taken a while for this to become a non-confrontational thing in the household. <laughs> and, and any of you who are, are therapists out there, when I tell you what we do, you will be handing me your business cards with a, a nod, and I'll be calling you at some point during the next week. But, but what we do, we've, we've evolved this system. Um, and it, it, it begins with me giving her my first draft. I never use the word, the phrase, rough draft. It begins with me giving her my first draft. And I have to do it with no affect. I can't tell her, God, this stinks, or I'm really worried about this. I just give it to her with, with no affect. And then she has to read it when I'm not in the house, you know, I'm not in the apartment. Because you know, she'll take it with her on a medical conference trip, I'll, or she'll, she'll read it while I'm going on a reporting trip, the problem being that I'm fragile. I can't sit there in the same room with her while she's reading my manuscript as the manuscript splays over the floor as she falls asleep, you know, with this a light sheen of drool across the top of the, the, top of the manuscript. I'd say, I, like I said, I'm, 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 I'm fragile. And so, so uh, when, when she's done, she has to give it back to me with zero affect as well. She has to use her subway face, if you will. She has to, she has to give it to me. She's not allowed to say, oh, God, Eric, this is the best thing you have ever written, because I would know she's lying her ass off, right? Nor is she allowed to say, oh, God, this really sucks, because I would hope that she's lying. You know, I would cry. So, so she gives it back to me. The, the, but the beauty of our, our, our system is that it, it's totally nonverbal. It's all, it's, all mar it's all margin notations and symbols, the first being, first being a smiley face. And that's very good, very good, because it means something, something made her laugh or smiled or whatever. Then comes a sad face, which is the sad face was like two streams of tears out of the eyes. And, and that's, that's very good also, because, because you know, it, it means that something moved her. And I, I, like, I like that as well. Then we move into the up arrows. They're up arrows of various, various lengths. And I've come to learn from experience that those are things that absolutely have to stay in the book. They're, they're good things. Then we get into, start getting into the more problematic territory. We get into the down arrows. And I have learned from experience there as well that those down arrows mean that it's non-negotiable. Something has to go. Like in Devil in the White City, she maybe take out 20. You guys, the guys out here would have loved it. The architect at my table probably would have loved this as well. You know, 20 pages I had to cut, because of her, I had to cut out of the Devil in the White City about the building of a single building's foundation. I loved it. She hated it. You know, she's just, this is gone. It gets even more problematic when I come to places where, where there are no, no notations at all in the margin. And I think to myself, oh my God, my own wife skipped. My own <laughs> wife skipped. But, but then comes the worst of all, where all too often, unfortunately, in the margin, where there are these long receding series of Zs, <laughs> you know? And so, and yeah, and at the end of the pro project, the, the, the whole process, um, you know, I just, it, it's like, it's so, it's so stressful. It's so, so discordant with everything that goes on in ordinary people's lives that I'm, I just swear to myself, I'm never writing another fucking book in my life. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do it. And then 
24 hours later, you know, I'm starting to think about books and, and working titles, and this is where my, my secret weapon comes into play again. She's very helpful with, with working titles. Um, when we were, we were thinking of, of uh, how to approach, in terms of working title, my book, Isaac Storm, about a giant hurricane that destroyed the city of Galveston, Texas in 1900, we were, as I recall, in a hot tub on a, in a coastal inn, well into a bottle of wine, um, coming up with working titles. And she was quite happy with some of these. The first being Big Wind Over Texas, <laughs> which, um, which we decided had, had, had sort of an excessively gastrointestinal color, <laughs> color to it. Then she came up with what remains her favorite, which she always reminds me, at least several times a year. Her, her favorite title for that book was Texas Blows. Texas, Texas blows. So, but she is allowed tonight, after considerable uh, uh, therapeutic conversation between us, she's allowed that tonight I am actually going to reveal to you what I'm working on next. I'm gonna break my most steadfast rule. I'm gonna reveal to you what I'm working on next. Now, it can't leave this room. You, you can't tweet it. You can't Instagram it. You can't Snapchat it. You can't right swipe me on Tinder. You can't left swipe me on Tinder. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to reveal this to you now. My next book is going to be called Killing Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you.